The Robert Moses Robert H. Saunders Power Dam, which spans the St. Lawrence River between Messina, New York and Cornwall, Ontario, produced its first hydropower on July 17, 1958. Sixty years later, it proudly stands as a crucial pillar of New York State's electric generation and transmission system and as a cornerstone of U.S.-Canadian cooperation. This exemplary power generation plant has produced some of North America's cleanest electricity for homes, farms, and industries. Today, the dam is comprised of two unique power plants. The St. Lawrence Franklin Delano Roosevelt Power Project, owned by the New York Power Authority, and the R.H. Saunders Generating Station, owned by Ontario Power Generation. While these two facilities are the centerpiece of the entire project's design, it also includes two upstream water flow control dams. The Longsu Dam, 3.5 miles upstream from the Power Dam, contains 30 spillway gates and is able to divert the entire river flow away from the Power Dam if required during high water periods. The Iroquois Dam is roughly 29 miles upstream, contains gates that also help control the flow of the water from Lake Ontario. These dams cannot generate power, but along with 16 miles of dikes, they help to direct the flow of the St. Lawrence River to the powerhouse. When water reaches the Moses Saunders Dam, it enters through massive intakes and plunges roughly 80 feet into a spiral-shaped case which encircles each turbine. It then passes through a flow control structure and strikes the turbine, spinning it and, in turn, a massive electromagnet which sits at the center of the generator. As the electromagnet rotates within a fixed frame containing tightly bound copper wires, it creates a flow of electrons or electric current in the wires. Each generator is able to produce 60,000 kilowatts. It is the International Lake Ontario St. Lawrence River Board, a division of the International Joint Commission, which determines on a weekly basis how much water the New York Power Authority and Ontario Power Generation passes through their facilities. Both power entities would prefer to pass optimal flow, but power generation is just one of a number of factors the River Board balances in determining how much water needs to be passed downstream. At times, only a small amount of water is required to be passed because water is needed upstream for other uses, such as maritime traffic, municipal water supply, and environmental stewardship, including the protection of shoreline habitats. Other times, however, the power entities are asked to pass more water than their plants can handle, so it becomes necessary to divert water through the Long Sioux Dam spillway. Over the last several years, spilling at Long Sioux has become more common as water levels have risen and remain above long-term averages. In fact, the winter of 2017 to 18 was the first time in the project's history that water needed to be spilled through Long Sioux during the ice season. As the areas upstream and downstream are often used recreationally, it is increasingly important to exercise caution around the power dam and its spillways, as spilling activities can take place with little notice and can create dangerous conditions both above and below the structures. An emergency issue, for example, may occur at one of the power plants which limits the amount of water the power dam can pass, triggering the need for a spill. The St. Lawrence FDR project was New York Power Authority's first major electric generating asset and, in fact, the very reason the New York Power Authority was created in the first place in 1931. The project's superb network of dams, dikes, its powerhouse, transmission lines, and substations all constitute an engineering marvel that contributes mightily to New York State's clean and economical energy resources.